He is the natural, Caio Bojalio, and he's fighting in his hometown, I believe it is, of Sao Paulo. I know back in July when I saw you at International Fight Week, you were very excited to hopefully fight on this card. Now that it's here, how are you feeling? I'm happy, man. Uh, if there's something that describes what I'm feeling right now, I'm happy, happy to be at home soil, happy to represent my, my country, you know, to have all the crowd uh, with me. Uh, I'm just happy because we, we did an amazing work in the training camp and it's almost time, you know, so I'm very happy. <laughs> Now, I was excited for your first matchup against uh, Nursultan Ruzaboyev, but I, that fell through. I guess he's not able to uh, make the walk on Saturday. You got a new opponent, Abus Magomedov, who was in the main event back in July. Uh, what did you think of Abus Magomedov's performance against Sean Strickland? He won that first round against the guy who's now the champion, but shortly thereafter seemed to have fallen off a cliff in terms of his cardio. I think, I think Abus is a great, great fighter. I think he's very skilled. He's good on the ground. He's good on the feet. Uh, the he, he won the first round because Strickland wanted him to win the first round, you know. Strickland let him win. That's why, because it was part of Strickland's strategy to get him try, tired and then start to fight after he got tired, you know. So, yeah, he won a round on Strickland, but it doesn't say that much. What, what's your takeaway from watching that fight? Uh, like you mentioned, I, I think you won the first round because he really put his, his foot on the gas pedal in, in that first round that seemed to really affect him. But that's a five-round fight. Your fight with him will be a three-round fight. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's something that people don't realize that much because there was a five-round fight. And when you're in a five-round fight and you get tired in the first round, you, will still got, you, you, you know that you still got four more rounds to go. So it's easier to give up, you know? Now it's three rounds. He's going to be... Even if he gets tired in the first, it's only two more rounds for him to go. So it's going to be hard for him to give up, you know. So I think that's what makes this fight more interesting, you know. Uh, I think he's very dangerous with his feet, his tips, you know, his front kicks. And I think uh, in the beginning of the fight, that's when my attention needs to be 100%. Looking at your recent opponents, how do you think Abus Magomedov stacks up against them. You know, you've got uh, Mikhail Zaychik, great fighter, Mahmoud Muradov. Do you think that he's a similar caliber to them or do you think he's better? I think a sim similar caliber, actually, because all my, all my opponents... Uh, listen, man, I'm, I'm not having an easy way in the UFC like all the prospects, you know? Like, I'm going into a hard way, you know? Like, my first opponent was a Sambo World Champ two times. The other one was kickboxing champ, like Petrosian, he's killing everybody in the division. Then after that was Mike Muradov that was coming from 14 win streak. He just lost to Jared Mechard. And then after that, Michal Oleksichuk that was top 15 on the light heavyweight. And then he got down to middleweight and was two first round knockouts, you know. So I think Abus is similar to them. But when it comes about uh, the things that they, are, they already accomplished in the UFC, I think he's a little bit below them, you know. Yeah, it seems like they're but giving you the hardest sure a... fighters that aren't ranked. Like, you know, they're giving you just that one little step below ranked opponents. So hopefully uh, a win this Saturday gets you ranked. Yeah, 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 that's what I'm thinking about. That's why I accepted this fight. Because I'm fighting a guy that just fought the champion, you know. And, the, and Strickland, after fight him, just got to the title. So I'm not even looking to top 15 anymore. After this fight, I'm going to start to look to the top 10. But first... I have something with Abus, and I need to fix this. And after that, I'm going to look to top 10 and then start my climbing into my main goal, that is the belt. It seems like your camp is starting to get a lot of recognition. We saw in the Contender Series, you were there quite often, and a lot of your teammates uh, were there and got contracts. So tell me about why you think Fighting Nerds is starting to really get uh, put on the map in the UFC. Because... Because we, our work is is a really serious work, you know. It, we work different than other guys. Like we study more, we're more serious about it, you know. We're more compromised about it, you know. Uh, I think the the union of the team is something that really puts energy into all training camps, you know. And we have an amazing staff of, of coaches, you know. We have a lot of coaches, a lot of guys into the same dream. All of the coaches want, wants to be world champion, just like the athletes, you know. So that's what makes us stronger, you know. I think we are proving this. Uh, we got four guys in Contender Series. We got three contracts, three victories. And, 
it's just the beginning, man. It's fighting there to take over. <laughs> you say it with such conviction, but I'm curious, when you say that you guys study more than other camps do and, and do things that are outside the box, can you give me some examples? Like, Why do you think your camp is doing things in a fashion that's different from other ones or better than other camps? Uh, and you say it, again, so, so convincingly. Uh, it just, it's, it's not like about just study fighting, you know? We... We like to study one thing that, that people don't don't use that much in MMA, that is the distance control. We study this a lot, you know, all the steps on distance control. We study how to generate more power with the punches. So mechanically, how can we generate more power with the punches? How can we be more fast? We study the position of the head. When I put my head on this side, what happens, what the guys have to me, and what I need to be aware of. When I put the head on the other side. So... Maybe there's other camps for sure. They're studying the high level and everything, but we we have some points that I think that people don't realize that much in fighting. You know, they just some people just will go there and wants to brawl. We do some mental training too. You know, some psychology training. You know, I I think that's because of that. You know. Do you think that the confidence is higher in your camp than other camps because you focus so much on the micro, on on the little things that other camps perhaps are not focusing? that much on when, when it comes to every little nuance of the sport it seems like that's the way that your camp really analyzes each opponent that you have yeah for sure for sure i think this all these micro things is coming to a macro things you know and yeah i think i think that's because of that you know we, we, we kind of building everything with micro you know we pay attention to something that people don't pay attention because it's a very new sport you know, it's a sport that's very new and it's evolving fast and we need to catch up, you know. So that's it. So when you talk about distance control particularly, is that about finding the ideal range for each fighter in your camp and then figuring out how to always stay in that range or get back into that range? Is that what you mean by focusing on distance control? No, it's more like... Uh controlling the distance you know like uh, when start the fighting people just uh, most of it most of it just go into it you know they just wanted to throw punches and throw this and throw that no we first needs to be aware of, of what the the opponent gives to us you know like what's the range of the the punches uh, how fast can he get to my range how can i go uh, backwards and then go to the to the left or to the right to get in the center of the octagon so it's more about octagon control distance control you know do you think that you and your teammates think differently during fights than other people from different camps do like when you're in a fight what's your thought process like when you see your opponent do certain things are you really kind of computing little things as it goes on as a result of that yeah yeah it's, it's just like hardware you know like like a computer like uh, the, the opponent is giving you informations and we get all these informations and analyze all this information, but without emotions. That's that's more important, you know. Because if you analyze with emotions, maybe you're gonna have a, a bad judgment about it, you know. So that that's that's the thing that I think we do different, you know. I think there's other camps that do it for sure. There's other good guys that do it for sure, but we just say, it, you know. <laughs> How do you keep emotion out of it? Because of course, if you're in a fight and you get hit your immediate instinct is like, okay, I've got to either get this guy back or, you know, oh, he yeah. got me. Yeah. How, you got how do you, yeah, yeah. So what are you, what are you doing in those moments? Yeah, I think you got to train the way you fight, you know, because when people train, they let them get punched a lot, you know, like they, they get punched and they just walk forward and they get punched and they don't realize how, how, how dangerous this is, you know, because when you're fighting, the distance that you play is different of the distance that you play when you're training. So the thing that we do, we play the same distance on fighting, on training that we do on fighting. That I don't know if you got me, but but it's something around that, you know. Absolutely. Well, it's always a pleasure picking your brain, Kyle. Uh, I think you and your camp are going to do Thank big you. things in mixed martial arts as the time continues. It's great to see you get a chance to compete in your hometown in Sao Paulo. That's this Saturday, UFC Fight Night. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. God bless you. And for November, is going to be a big show. <laughs>